tonight, the historic Imagine impeachment the trial gets underway. You will vote to find the president guilty or not guilty, to find his conduct impeachable or not impeachable. What to expect as senators become jurors in the case against President Trump, plus growing fear over the coronavirus. More cases should be expected in other parts of China and possibly other countries. As the death count rises in China, why more are starting to worry it could spread around the world and abortion in America. And we certainly can enact change across the United States. How one senator is using her platform to advocate for life. All this and more tonight on Faith Nation. Senate will convene as a court of impeachment. And with those words, the floor of the United States Senate becomes the courtroom for the impeachment trial of President Trump. I'm Jenna Browder. Welcome to Faith Nation. And I'm John Jessup. For the third time in United States history, an American president faces an impeachment trial. And tonight, to cover all the bases, we are reporting on this historic event with Chief Political Analyst David Brody and Ben Kennedy at the White House. But we begin this evening with Abigail Robertson on Capitol Hill. And Abigail, before the opening arguments can begin, trial rules must be established. What are some of the main sticking points Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has laid out? That's right, Jenna. Senate Majority Leader McConnell was tasked with presenting the procedural resolution as to what the rules for the trial will be, and he actually changed one of his rules right before the trial began today, and that was during that 24-hour time frame that each side is given to lay out their case. Originally, he said he, that they would have two days to present their case for, 20, for up to 24 hours, but right before the trial, he actually stretched it out to three days. And apparently he made this, this change after getting a lot of pushback from his own party during the GOP lunch right before the trial began today. And now that he's made that change, McConnell feels confident that he has the votes to pass this resolution today. Take a look. Can we still put fairness, even-handedness, and historical precedent ahead of the partisan passions of the day? Today's vote will contain some answers. The organizing resolution we'll put forward already has the support of a majority of the Senate. That's because it sets up a structure that is fair, even-handed, and tracks closely with past precedents that were established unanimously. Now, on the flip side, Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer has referred to this procedural resolution as a national disgrace and will be offering different amendments through this afternoon and possibly into tonight. Now, Abby, we know the issue of witnesses has been a major sticking point. What have you been hearing up there on the Hill? Well, we're hearing from Republicans that they are pretty standing with McConnell that the issue of witnesses should not be voted on until after phase one. The majority of Republicans I've spoken with have told me that they don't think witnesses are necessary. And then a few more moderate Republicans say they want to make that decision and assess it after they hear both sides present their case. But Democrats, on the other hand, have been pretty unified in their calls that witnesses are necessary for a fair trial. And I spoke with Senator Mark Warner, who told me that he, he really, it's very important to him to hear from people who actually spoke to the president about the Ukraine situation. Let's play that clip. As a juror, I want to hear from some of the people who were in the room with the president. I do hope um, uh, we'll get a chance to hear from the folks who have direct knowledge of what happened, because at the end of the day, uh, we got we got to try to get to the truth here. Now, Democrats will need four Republicans to vote with them in order to bring forth witnesses in the trial. Abigail, Adam Schiff is leading the team of House impeachment managers for the Democrats. Uh, he got a chance to address senators today. What was his main message? Well, basically, his message today is that Trump committed an impeachable offense. He should be removed from office. He also said that eventually all of the facts will be lay at, laid out. All of the evidence will come forward. So why not hear it now while the trial is ongoing? Take a look. The facts will come out in the end. The documents which the president is hiding will be released. 
through the Freedom of Information Act or through other means over time. Witnesses will tell their stories in books and film. The truth will come out. The question is, will it come out in time? And what answer shall we give if we did not pursue the truth now and let it remain hidden until it was too late to consider on the profound issue of the president's guilt or innocence? Now, Senator Warner also made a similar point to me. He told me that Ambassador Bolton has a $2 million book advance. His story will come out eventually. He's agreed to testify in the Senate if subpoenaed. So if he's already going to write a book about it, why not hear from him during the trial? All right, thank you, Abby. Turning now to David Brody. As we settle in for the trial and uh, we watch all the historic stuff play out, David, what are some of the things that viewers should be mindful of watching at home? Here's the key thing. Uh, four Republican senators. Will they break ranks with the Republicans, vote with the Democrats on witnesses? If they do, we're in for 40 days and 40 nights. We're into the biblical proportion of this trial because that's probably how long it's going to go. If not, then phase one, the opening statements, that's it. And we're looking at about eight to 10 days or so of a trial. So we're looking at the difference between 10 days and 40 days. I also think what's interesting here, uh, John and Janet, is that this is not like your normal criminal trial. I mean, these senators are not just jurors. OK, they're impartial jurors. Come on, let's dispense with the uh, formalities. Give me a break. None of them are impartial, but they're supposed to be impartial. Here's the thing. They are not just going to be judge and jury. They're also going to shape the trial by a lot of the amendments here. So when do you ever get the jury to actually shape the trial as well? It is unprecedented. It's something very different. We just don't see this very often, obviously. All right. Thanks, David. And let's go to David. Uh, let's go to White House correspondent Ben Kennedy now. Ben, talk to us about the president and his team's defense strategy here. Well, Jenna, bottom line, Trump's legal team dismisses impeachment as a political act and even urges senators to swiftly reject the charges. Well, we're here meeting with world leaders. President Trump arrived at the World Economic Forum as his impeachment trial got underway. We're bringing back tremendous business in the United States, and they're all here to see. Uh, I'll be making a speech, and then we'll be leaving shortly. Uh, but I think it's very important. Uh, the other's just a hoax. It's the witch hunt that's been going on for years, and it's frankly, it's disgraceful. Trump's legal team outlined his defense strategy in a brief, arguing the president did absolutely nothing wrong, calling it a rigged process, adding that Trump is the victim of a partisan plot to corrupt the extraordinary power of impeachment for use as a political tool to overturn the result of the 2016 election and to interfere in the 2020 election. It has to be criminal behavior, criminal in nature. The articles of impeachment are two non-criminal actions, namely obstruction of Congress and abuse so of power. The brief adds the framers adopted a standard that requires a violation of established law to state an impeachable offense. By contrast, in their articles of impeachment, House Democrats have not even attempted to identify any law that was violated. But some legal scholars state the president doesn't have to break the law to commit an impeachable offense. Democrats say the facts are indisputable and the evidence is overwhelming that Trump pressured Ukraine to investigate a political rival. If the president is so confident in his case, if Leader McConnell is so confident the president did nothing wrong, why don't they want the case to be presented in broad daylight? We believe that once you hear those initial presentations, the only conclusion will be that the president has done absolutely nothing wrong. Now, you just heard from White House counsel Pat Cibalone, who will represent Trump along with his personal attorney, Jay Sekulow. House Democrats call Cibalone a material fact witness, and he should be disqualified from defending the commander in chief. The White House responded today, calling Democrats an utter joke in this move to remove one of Trump's lawyers is again another political stunt. John Jenna. All right, Ben at the White House, thank you. And back to Abigail on Capitol Hill. Abigail, with a, a big event like impeachment, there's going to be a lot of stepped up security. Talk to us about the extra security measures you're seeing up there today. 
I have never seen anything like the security that we've seen right now. There are police officers everywhere. Even the media with um, Senate hard passes now have to have an, an extra pass to cover the impeachment trial. There's new measures put in place for reporters who want to go into the Senate gallery and watch the impeachment trial play out. There's different pens for the reporters, so we don't necessarily have the free reign that we're used to. It is very intense. They are not taking any risks right now. All right, Abigail Robertson on Capitol Hill, thank you. Well, the Senate impeachment trial is stopping four senators and presidential hopefuls from campaigning in Iowa. Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, Amy Klobuchar, and Michael Bennett are tied up in D.C. while the trial is in session. And today, Sanders canceled a rally he had planned at the University of Northern Iowa. We've had to, needless to say, jiggle our schedule very significantly. Uh, because I'm going to be spending a whole lot of time in D.C. And with less than two weeks to go before Iowa voters head to the polls in the country's first in the nation caucus, the impeachment trial isn't putting a damper on every leading campaigner. Uh, candidates like former Vice President Joe Biden and former South Bend Mayor Pete Buttigieg are hitting the ground hard, hoping to win over those Democratic caucus uh, voters. And David is back with us again on set. David, it is historic, no doubt. We all watched all the senators get sworn in by Chief Justice John Roberts last week. But I got to imagine those four senators <laughs> that Jen just mentioned would rather be in Iowa where the caucus is just 13 days away. Yeah, and if we can label those four senators in terms of priority-wise, Amy Klobuchar is really hurt the most here. She was on the rise. She got the New York Times endorsement, or at least the co-endorsement, right. along with Elizabeth Warren. And she had started to rise in the polls and done very well in the debates. I think this is going to hurt her. Why? Because Iowa, it's Iowa a bust specifically for her. Not so much Joe Biden. Bernie Sanders has another shot in New Hampshire. Same with Elizabeth Warren. Klobuchar had to be in Iowa pretty much every day. She's got, gone to all 99 counties, so I think it really hurts her the most. David, let's talk about the two sides and what we saw today. What can we infer when you look at the teams that the two sides have put together, the managers for the Democrats and then the president's legal team? Well, I got to tell you, I thought the House managers did actually a pretty good job today uh, so far. We haven't even hit opening arguments yet. I mean, we just hit the, the rule uh, uh, stage. Uh, and why do I think that? Uh, I thought Adam Schiff actually not only presented well, but was pretty passionate and didn't seem so robotic like he normally is. Uh, and also, they used videotape, in, es in essence, the president's own words against him, if you will. And I think that, especially uh, because this is a show, it's on, when I say it's a show, I mean, there's a, there's a theatrical aspect to it. Uh, I thought that was effective to say, the strategy here is, look, the president said it himself. We're just going to play you his words, and you can judge for yourself. I think that's pretty effective. As for Trump's team, they're saying, look, there, there's nothing here. For, for get a crime, there's not even a high crime and misdemeanor, and that they have overplayed their hand entirely because the president released the transcript and Ukraine got the aid. So what's the point here? Why are we doing all of this? Now, Democrats have to make their case to the American people and really sell it. That's right. That's David, right. just before Senate, uh, the Senate vote today, Leader McConnell backtracked and changed some of the proposed rules that he he released last night. Can you explain the backtrack? We heard Abby hint at it, mm -hmm. saying that he got some pushback at the GOP luncheon. What kind of pushback do you think he received to backtrack on the rules that he, he wanted? Right. That pushback was coming from a few senators, specifically Susan Collins, a moderate from Maine, Rob Portman from Ohio, somewhat of a center-right moderate, uh, if you will. Uh, they had concerns that this was going to be too, uh, you know, too batoned in the hand, you know, that, that it was too strict. And we had to not rush this, and it was going to look poor and uh, not good for Republicans if we looked like a rush job. We were doing this at four in the morning in the middle of the night. And I think that was some of the concern. And so uh, you had that. But it wasn't just those two senators. There were a few more. And he can't accuse, uh, uh, he cannot lose all of these senators. Does that indicate the potential hazard in corralling or keeping his, his conference together? Right. It does. But Mitch McConnell's been very good at this uh, in the past. And I think that's the most important thing here. That my, I'm, I'm going to be interesting from a nerdy, geeky way to watch McConnell work the Senate procedural magic that he has, and he does. I mean, he's been around a long time since, what, the Revolutionary uh, War period. <laughs> but he, he's good at this stuff. Uh, David, the $64,000 question, oh, how long is this going to last? Will it be a quick and speedy trial, or could this drag out over weeks and 
Yeah. Dare I say months? Oh, goodness. Well, first of all, do I get paid if I answer correctly? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Uh, well, we'll take that up separately. Uh, I think it's going to be about 10 days. I really do. I, I, I don't think it's ever going to get to the witness stage. Why? Because there's reciprocity involved. In other words, uh, the Republicans are going to say, look, if you're going to bring up John Bolton, Democrats, we're going to bring up Hunter Biden. And at that point, there'll be a stalemate. There won't be enough votes either way. And I think at that point, everybody's just going to pack it, pack it up, say goodnight, and that's going to be the end of it. The State of the Union is February 4th. I think the Republicans Republicans, McConnell, they want this wrapped up so the president can say on February 4th, the State of the Union is strong because I've been acquitted of all charges. We'll see. All right, David Brody, see. thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Coming up, growing fears over coronavirus. The symptoms of the deadly illness next. Hey, if you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm gonna teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. It's about the competition. I kind of put that pressure on myself, and I think people had expectations. It's about overcoming. We use this phrase all the time, keep chopping, keep practicing hard. It's about going the distance. You know, I think as a father, it's my job, you know, to lead. Just be the best husband and father I can be. Watch Going the Distance with Sean Brown Saturday night at 7.30 on the CBN News Channel. Orphan's Promise is committed to loving and serving at-risk children, to helping keep families together, and to creating opportunities for strong and sustainable communities around the world. We're working in over 60 countries around the world, and with your help, we can do even more. There's an old African proverb I love that says, if you want to run fast, run alone. But if you want to run far, run together. At Orphan's Promise, we want to run far so we can touch the lives of as many orphaned and vulnerable children as possible. But we don't want to go alone. We're out to change the world, one child, one family, one community at a time. Will you join us? Welcome back. Well, tonight, the first American case of the mysterious coronavirus has been diagnosed, prompting airports across the country to take extra precautions. The disease that swept across Asia is now threatening countries around the globe. Now, the World Health Organization is holding an emergency meeting tomorrow to determine whether to declare an international public health emergency. CBN senior correspondent Eric Phillips joins us with more. Eric? Jenna and John, this is a serious situation, and the U.S. case is in Washington state, and the male patient reportedly flew in from China before three U.S. airports began screening for the illness. Now it appears that transmission of the virus can happen between humans, which could make it spread faster and farther. Workers disinfect the streets of Wuhan, where residents wear masks as local officials urge people not to travel into or out of the central China city. Officials believe this is ground zero for the outbreak, and now hundreds have reportedly been infected throughout the country. A handful have died. It's also spreading between Thailand, one in Japan, and one in the Republic of Korea. This is forcing countries in Asia to check body temperatures at airports and railway stations, like this one in Hong Kong. This man, a registered nurse from San Francisco. Is it kind of frightening at all to you this, that this is starting to spread? Oh, yes. Of course, that's why I'm going home. The outbreak has also put other countries on alert as millions of Chinese travel for the Lunar New Year. The CDC taking precautions at U.S. airports in New York, Los Angeles, and San Francisco. And at this airport in Rome, posted signs warn passengers of the coronavirus, its symptoms, and ways to avoid contamination. We're going, going back to China, but not Wuhan. Mm. And Wuhan now is, um, um, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not for sure about it. Uh, 
certainly we should not go back to Wuhan city now uh, if we have no big matters to deal with. In addition to airports in New York and California, airports in Atlanta and Chicago are also screening passengers who have been to Wuhan. Symptoms of the coronavirus can mimic those of the common cold, flu, or even pneumonia. And in some extreme cases, it can even lead to the severe acute respiratory syndrome, or SARS. Jenna. Yeah. All right, Eric Phillips, thank you. Well, from coronavirus to the flu, flu cases are on the decline in America. The latest numbers from the CDC show a drop in flu activity. This was the second consecutive week of, week of fewer cases of the virus. But it is still too soon to determine if the flu season has hit, hit its peak yet. The virus remains widespread across the country. 32 states are experiencing high levels of flu activities. Well, just days before the March for Life, one senator tells us why she's not giving up on the pro-life fight when we come back. Daddy? Yeah, buddy? How many nickels are in a dollar? There are 20 nickels in a dollar. How do birds fly? Does locally make my bow stronger? Yeah, yeah. Daddy, when we die, will we go to heaven? Do you have the answer to life's biggest question? Call the 700 Club. We'll help you find answers to the important questions life brings your way. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else the CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. Hello, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter, board certified neurologist and number one New York Times bestselling author. Wouldn't it be great to boost your energy, eliminate brain fog, and even reverse brain disease? Well, you can, and I'm going to show you how, along with some of the world's most well-respected brain experts in this DVD, Protect Your Brain. Get Protect Your Brain, a free DVD, only from the Christian Broadcasting Network, featuring experts on the cutting edge of neuroscience and brain health. No matter how many times you've failed in the past, you really can do this. In Protect Your Brain, you'll discover simple strategies to keep your brain young and healthy, improve your memory, Discover the gut-brain connection in Protect Your Brain. Get your free copy at CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000. If you want to improve the quality of your life, get the DVD Protect Your Brain and get it today. The Supreme Court will not take up a case that threatens to dismantle the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare. The court was asked to weigh in on the law's constitutionality after a federal appeals court struck down the individual mandate requiring Americans to purchase insurance. And that court sent the case back to a federal judge in Texas who previously threw out the law to review how much of it can remain intact. The high court's decision dashes Democrats' hope of putting the issue of health care front and center in the presidential election. Well, this Friday is the National March for Life in Washington, D.C. Thousands of pro-life advocates are expected to make their way from the National Mall to the steps of the Supreme Court. That's right. Their, their march will have them uh, walk right past the United States Capitol, where, as Paul Strand reports, some pro-life legislators say they're keeping up the fight for life. Fighting abortion is a top priority for Senator Joni Ernst, but she says getting any laws passed to do that here on Capitol Hill is an uphill battle these days. And we've tried to run a number of these pro-life pieces of legislation, but they have been blocked at every opportunity by the Senate Democrats. At some point, I hope that we have more people serving in Congress that recognize the value in every human life and believes in opportunity for that life. With the January 24th March for Life quickly approaching, the senator says she's particularly excited about this year's theme, Pro-Life is Pro-Woman. 
men, women, children, we all come together to encourage others to support life. And that life, the life of a woman begins in the womb. So whether it is a child in the womb or an adult woman or her daughters, uh, we want to understand that every woman is significant and every woman can enact change. And while we may not be able to enact legislation, we certainly can enact change across the United States and understanding that life is valuable. So even if Congress isn't doing much for the pro-life cause, Ernst believes if the people can change, if the culture can change and bend towards the pro-life cause, so eventually will the legislatures here in Washington and in state houses across America. Paul Strand, CBN News, reporting from Capitol Hill. All right, thank you, Paul. Well, lawmakers in Iowa are considering a measure to weaken abortion protections there. The proposed bill would change the state constitution to, quote, not secure or protect a right to abortion or require the funding of abortion. Iowa's governor has voiced her support for it. If approved, it would likely face multiple court challenges. How the president is pledging to help protect ecosystems in America and the world. Details when we come back. Region's first ROTC graduate student. Meet the pastors who are preaching the gospel in a fresh, fearless way. I'm Roberto Torres Cedillo. Join me each week for Next Gen Voices. And watch God transform a generation. How would you like to get a redo on your health, on your body, on your arteries, so you could have the energy you had 20 years ago? The great news is you can. I'm Dr. Mike Roizen, chair of the Wellness Institute at the Cleveland Clinic. I've written four New York Times bestsellers, but even better than having to read all that, you can listen to this DVD and watch it. Protect your heart? Yes, you can. Here's how. Go to CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000 for your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Let the medical experts show you their new discoveries on how to avoid heart disease and even reverse it. Easy steps to uncover the hidden dangers in your medicine cabinet, reduce stress, and get a complete do-over for your health. Call 1-800-700-7000. That's 1-800-700-7000. Or go to CBN.com to claim your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Finally tonight, here in the U.S., climate is a big issue for Democratic candidates out on the campaign trail. And it's also been a big talking point at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland this week. Today, President Trump announced his administration is taking steps to join other world powers in a pledge to plant more trees to protect the environment. We're committed to conserving the majesty of God's creation and the natural beauty of our world. Today, I'm pleased to announce the United States will join One Trillion Trees Initiative being launched here at the World Economic Forum. One Trillion Trees. And in doing so, we will continue to show strong leadership in restoring, growing, and better managing our trees and our forests. And the initiative encourages countries to plant one trillion trees, as the president said, to help absorb carbon dioxide. The World Economic Forum announced the initiative during this week's meetings, where this year's theme is sustainability. And who doesn't love more trees? And that's a lot of trees. <laughs> a lot of trees. <laughs> All right, have a great evening, everybody. We'll see you back here tomorrow.